How can we turn hair curves from the new hair system into hair cards with actual custom UVs? I wanted to make groomable feathers for my characters with the new hair system. I found one method that works pretty well. Even though it requires some manual work, you can groom the resulting cards and create their UVs manually. That way, you can be sure they'll be compatible with texture atlases. It can be used to make game ready or simply low poly hair, feathers, leaves, or whatever you want. A tube version is also possible. I'll share some hair and hand painted feather atlases with a link in the description. It's just in case you don't have your own yet. Be aware that they won't make great materials. You will also find a demo blend file with the notes and a haircut shader. 1. Curves to cards. First, let's tackle the easiest part. We'll need a brand new node tree for our hair system. At the very end of the modify stack, anything you put below it won't work. To create planes out of curves, we need to convert them into a mesh using the curve to mesh node. We can use the curve line primitive as a profile for the curve to mesh node by setting something like 0.5 as a start x value and entering the inverse as the end x value. We'll get this result. The width of the cards can be tweaked more easily using a set curve radius before the curve to mesh node. You can use a float curve node to tweak and taper the profile if you want. You'll need to plug the factor output of a spline parameter node as the value. If you need the width to be proportional to the curve's length, which was my case with these tail feathers, you can use the length of a spline length node and multiply it by your desired radius value. The spline length returns the length of each curve as a float between 0 and 1. Our radius being the second input of this math node, we can plug it to the group input, that way we'll be able to tweak it directly from the modifiers tab. It'll also allow us to change the value of this hair system without affecting other systems sharing the same node tree. Call this value radius. 2. UV map from instances. OK, we got our cards. But what about the material and more importantly the UVs? With the curves as is, you still can't use image textures, only procedural ones. For some styles, it will suffice. But not here. That wouldn't be funny otherwise. I tried unwrapping the cards directly in the node group by using a UV unwrap node and some vector map. But it seems it's just not made for this kind of situation. So, to get what we want, we'll use those cards we created as proxies for other remade hair cards. The method relies on matching point indexes between the instances and the proxies. The proxies and the pre-made hair cards must have corresponding indexes, otherwise they'll break. So to avoid mistakes, we'll create our hair card instances using another geometry node tree. Add a curve or a mesh, doesn't matter. Give it a geonode modifier and make a new tree. Add a curve line primitive and use this as the geometry. To give it some length, we'll need to crank up the NY value to make this group easier to tweak and reuse. And since we can't connect individual vector axes to group inputs for some reason, let's add a combine XYZ node and plug it in the end vector. That way, we'll be able to connect the Y value to the group input and make it tweakable in the modifiers tab. Let's call it length. Since we'll need precise control of the point count, let's add a resample curve node after the curve line. Connect the count input to the group input, call it point count. Now, the goal is to replicate a card with a shape similar to the proxies we previously made. So let's add a set curve radius node after our curve line and plug this into a curve to mesh node. Depending on the type of cards, if you did use the spline parameter and float curve nodes in your other tree, copy and paste them here too. The reason is that if the shape difference between your hair card instances and proxies is too great, the UVs will distort. So try to get matching shapes if your textures have details or patterns. For the profile, use another curve line with the same value as in our other node tree. You can plug a multiply node in between the float curve and the radius value so you can have a radius or width to tweak in the modifier. Once you're done, you can manually convert your card into a real mesh. Be sure to remember the point count you chose, it's super important. We can now give a material to this card, UV unwrap it, and place the UV island according to your needs. If you want to create different instances, duplicate your card and give the duplicates different UVs. Make sure they're all grouped into a collection. Now, let's go back to our hair curves and their tree. First, let's add a resample curve node B for the set curve radius. And let's plug the count input into the group input. Choose the same point count value as for the instances. Then, let's add our instances on point node as points. We want the hair curves before their conversion into a mesh. As instances, we want our collection containing our unwrapped cards. 
so we also need a collection info node. And since we don't want a card on each point of the curve, let's use an endpoint selection node. Put the end size at zero and plug that into the selection input. That way the instances will only appear on the first point of every curve. Check, pick instances if you have multiple instance cards. We are almost done. Last step is to snap our instances to our proxies. We can't deform instances, so we need to turn them into geometry with a realize instances node. A set position node is a good node for this last part. We'll also need a sample index node. Set the sample index to a vector type. Plug the output of the curve to mesh node as the geometry. As the value, plug a position node. And as the index, plug an index node. The sample index node will look at our proxies every point, identify them by their index, and retrieve their position. Now, if we plug the resulting value as the position in the set position node, with our instances as the geometry, every point in our instances will get snapped to their corresponding proxy point. It really only works if both proxies and instances have matching point indexes. You can now groom your cards as you please. 3. Curves to tubes. I'll go over this one quickly. If you prefer tubes over cards to make curves for example, replace the curve line profile with a circle curve with a low resolution for both the proxies and the instances. Again. They need the same point count and resolution. I'm not familiar with unwrapping tubes to make curls, so I can't help much with this. But you'd need proper UV unwrapping techniques and texture to get a seamless result. For rigging, for some strange reason, the tilt of the hair curve does not seem to be correctly calculated when the curves are moving along with their animated surface mesh. It's not noticeable with hair, but with cards, it's a real problem. Anyway, to rig our cards, we'll need to convert our groom to a mesh. So keep an unconverted copy as a backup and convert it. If your groom is a haircut, you can parent it to the head bone of your character. Another lazy and more inclusive approach that I love is to slap a surface to form modifier on my groom and bind it to my character mesh. Combined with a smooth corrective modifier, it does a great job for my character's tail and ear feathers. If I needed more control, I'd either a new bones to the rig and skin the groom to them, or I'd use cloth simulation on the groom. The bone option is kind of a must if you intend to export this to a game engine and not use simulation there. Depending on the resulting poll account, you might also want to create LODs. You can do that by either decimating copies of your groom, or downright creating a new groom from the same hair curves but with a lesser point count for both instances and proxies. 5 Shading Tips and Tricks You can use the Surface UV Coordinates attribute as a vector for an image texture which will return the color of the pixel corresponding to the hair strand's position on their surface mesh UV map. It's very useful for things like fur. You can paint your character, and the first color will match. You can also use vertex groups as masks to create patterns and variations in your groom. For my tail feathers, I used a vertex group to add some light blue stripes at the tips of the longest feathers. You just need to create a geonote group that looks like this, with a string input going into the name input of a named attribute node and the output of this node plugged into the group output. In the modifiers tab, you can type your vertex group as the name input and type a new name as an attribute output. Copy and paste the new attribute name into an attribute shader node. You can now use it as a mask for a mixed color node, a color ramp, and much more. 6. About solid curves. Giving actual thickness to hair curves is as quick as plugging any kind of profile into a curved mesh node. You can create custom profiles using other curves, and use a float curve node to create more interesting tapering. But while this gives some pretty cool creative freedom, it can create very high poly hair strands that aren't exactly easy to texture. They can't use custom UVs unless you're one of those node wizards, and you master the UV nodes and they can't use the curve infer shader node either because they were converted to a mesh. So while this method can work in a lot of cases, it wouldn't work for me in this case. This tutorial is now over. I hope you found it useful. If so, feel free to leave a like and subscribe. Cheers.